I'm Anil Kumar. In this video, I'm going to discuss with you strategies to graph polynomials when they are given in factored form. I have set of videos to really discuss this topic in details. In this video, I'll kind of give you a concept as to how the factors and their degree affects the graph. So let me begin by taking a very simple example of a polynomial. We'll take up f of x equals to, let's say, cubic polynomial with three factors. That means x minus, let's say it is 4, and x plus 1 times x plus 3. So we're taking an example where we have three different factors. Now these factors which I've taken at present, they are all linear factors. So you need to understand this strategy also. When we do not have any degree here, then they are all linear factors. When you sketch a graph of a polynomial with linear factors, the graph will cross the x-axis like a straight line. It is not going to turn or it will not move as if x-axis is a tangent to it. That's what it means. So let me first show you how to sketch this kind of a graph. Now, for this graph, let us say this is a coordinate axis. Well, I'm doing things which are not to the scale, since the idea is to teach you the concept. So we'll mark zeros on the x-axis. So this is the x-axis, that's the y-axis. First zero is when this factor is zero. x minus four is equal to zero at x equals to four. So let me write down zeros here, right? So we have zeros and zeros, the first one will be at x equals to four. The next one will be at x equals to minus one, since minus one will make this factor zero. And the third one is at x equals to minus three. So these are the three zeros for us. Now let us see how to sketch a graph with these x-intercepts where the intercepts are at 4, minus 1, and minus 3. So 4, let us say this is 4 for us. Okay, So let's say this point is when x equals to 4, minus 1. Let us say this point is where x is minus 1. And then we have 1 at minus 3. So let's say this point is minus 3. Now, since this is a cubic function with positive leading coefficient, if I multiply these x's, we get positive leading coefficient. Let me write that down here. So what we have here is degree 3. So we have two things known to us. Degree is 3 and leading coefficient is positive. Is positive, right? Now, when we say leading coefficient is positive, that means that the right side is up, right? So right side is up, so kind of going like this. Is it okay? And when we say degree 3, then it means opposite end. So the characteristics will be polynomial will move from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. You get an idea. So degree 3 means opposite ends. And coefficient positive means right up. Okay. Now, we also know that the graph of this polynomial will cross these x-intercepts like a straight line, right? So it is not going to turn. So if we start from here, for example, so we'll just go cross it like a line. Then we have to turn to come back to the zero and then again turn to get back to quadrant one. So connecting these kind of like this with a smooth graph, as you can see, kind of like this, right? So you can go and sketch a graph. So that is how you can sketch the given function. We are calling this f of x. Now we can, for accuracy, find what y-intercept is. That is f of 0. So if I substitute 0 here, I get minus 4 times plus 1 times plus 3, right? So that is minus 12. So this point is minus 12 for us. Now this graph may not look so accurate, but it will fetch your full marks. It has all the right things in it. And that is how you can actually sketch polynomial in your test papers. Correct? 
So that is one way we can sketch and probably the most simplest of all ways, right? Let me change this equation and I'll sketch another graph. And that's the reason why I kind of squeezed it in. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what really happens if I change the multiplicity of these zeros. So I'm making a small change here. We have x minus 4 times x plus 1 times x plus 3. Now the change I'm going to make is that in one of the zeros, I'll make it square, right? So, so let me make one of the zeros as square. Let, let this be square. And the other zero, I'll kind of make it Q. So what we have here is now same zeros. Let's write down. We have same zeros. Zero is at x equals to 4, x equals to minus 1, and x equals to minus 3. However, one thing has changed, and that is we call it multiplicity or order of zero. So we call it order or multiplicity. That really means how many zeros are there at that x-intercept. So here we have 2. So we say the multiplicity is 2. Here we have 3, so we write 3. If it is 1, we need not write. And in this case, I'm just writing to make it very clear. So that becomes the multiplicity of 0. Now, how will the graph change? That is what we have to think about. What you note here is that if the order is not linear, it is kind of... Uh, quadratic, then at the x-intercept, the graph will turn. So, so what we note here is a couple of things. Let us make note of those things first. If it is order is 2, if order is, let me say E1, right? If it is E1, then what happens? In that case, the graph turns. We have a turning point. It could be like this or like this. So that results into turning point at x-intercept. So what we are trying to understand here, behavior at x-intercept. So what happens at x-intercept? This is what we are trying to understand now. Okay. Now, of course, when it turns, x-axis becomes tangent, right? So, so x-axis could be like this or like this. Do you see that? The second case is when the order is odd. So it could be 3, 5, whatever or when order is odd number, like 3, then what happens? In that case, the graph actually goes in a manner like this. It could be like this, or if it's coming from that other side, like this. Do you see that? So x-axis is a tangent. So in both cases, we see that x-axis is tangent. to the graph. However, there is one difference. Here, in this case, let me write in different ink. So we are using so many inks. I hope that helps. Uh, so in this case, when it is odd, it crosses. So, so the x-axis kind of somewhere here, right? So it's a tangent, right? But it crosses. <clears throat> in this case, it does not cross. It turns. So that is a huge difference. You will understand this when I really sketch the graph for the second function, okay? So I'm again calling it f of x. Anyway, you can always name it f of x. It was better if I could have given it g of x. Anyway, we'll sketch it on a different set of coordinates. So we again have three zeros. So we have 0 at 4, minus 1, and minus 3, correct? So we again have... 3, 0, 4, minus 1, and minus 3. However, the degree has changed, right? So what is the degree now? So let me write down the degree here. So degree for this particular function is 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, 6. Degree is 6, and leading coefficient is positive. So positive, we didn't change that part, right? So positive leading coefficient. Now, what does it mean? Positive leading coefficient means right side up, right? Right side up. So our graph will still go end in the right-hand corner. That is quadrant 1. 
but the degree is 3, right? So if the degree is 3, then what happens? I mean, the degree is 6. 6 is even. So what we have here is even degree, right? That means both same ends. Even means same ends. Even means same ends. Let me introduce here. Same ends. Since it is even. So both are going upwards, right? So we know both are going upwards. Now, let us try to understand what happens at the x intercepts okay what happens at the x intercepts now in the very first x intercept which is at minus 3 we see it is linear right so it will just cross like a straight line as it did in the previous graph however the x intercept at minus 1 is of multiplicity 3 cube right so it'll go like a cube since we are on this side coordinate 3 it'll go like this do you see that x axis is tangent and we have crossed the x axis that's what I'm saying x axis is tangent to the graph and you cross when the order is odd 3 is odd perfect for 4 is even so it will turn we are now here so it will turn so it has to go kind of like this I hope that's point is absolutely clear connecting these gives us the graph so let's just connect them okay so this is with a smooth graph so come over this so I'm purposely leaving it in different color so that you appreciate how we are actually sketching our graph so that way is you get perfect graphs do you see that of course one point which is right there is the y-intercept which should be marked right so y intercept it is always good to write so it becomes otherwise a family of graph right so once you put in the y intercept it is specific to your equation so that is f of 0 equals 2 so when I write here we get 4 square times 1 q times uh, 3 right so that is what it is minus 4 square which makes it positive 16 and 16 times 3 I think is 48 right so we'll mark this point as 48 so that becomes the y intercept once you mark y intercept then it is a specific graph it is not family of curve is that okay so that is how it is so in general if you have to graph polynomials starting from the intercept or factored form find the x intercepts also find multiplicity or order of zeros as that decides the behavior of the graph at the x-intercept. If it is linear, it just crosses like a line. If it is even, it will turn at the x-axis. And if it is odd, x-axis will become tangent to the graph and the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay. Then you have to count the power so that you know what is the degree of the polynomial and also check the leading coefficient. Degree and the leading coefficient will decide the end behavior once the end behavior is known. Zeros and their multiplicity is known. It's easy to sketch as we've done in this particular video. Follow these steps. I'm giving you links for some practice questions. Go through those links, pause the video, answer and I hope that will make you perfect in this particular topic. Thank you and all the best.